We have a new topic that's encryption. So I want to ask you all who thinks encryption or encrypting your emails and stuff is a really good idea. Raise your hand, please. Ah, that's a lot of people. And who has ever done it, encrypted email or something? Yeah, almost the same amount. And who's doing it like on a regular basis, like say for about 50% of your online communication, your email, who has like 50% encrypted? Wow, <laughs> not much happening in the audience, I have to say. And that's a well-known problem, I guess. We have nice encryption, but people are not really using it, and not really at all outside of this community, I guess. So our next speaker is working with an organization or project that's trying to do something on this front, the Pretty Easy Privacy Project. So I would like to welcome to the stage here Anani Marquez, who is um, yeah, uh, head of the, uh, or on the main board of the Pretty Easy Privacy Foundation, and is also, separately from that, uh, on the board of the Swiss Chaos Computer Club. So that's why he might be also familiar to you. So you can start now. Please give a warm round of applause to Rani. Thanks. Test, test. Can you hear me now? Yeah, OK. So it works. So this talk is about the Pretty Easy Privacy uh, Project. Uh, we already had different talks and different conferences about it. And here we, we just want to, prevent, uh, to present the state where we are, and uh, not, not just on the technical level, but also on the social level, collaborations we are having with other organizations to um, go faster in what we are doing here. So it's about automatic encryption for the masses. As you know, that's a classical slide uh, nowadays in, most, in lots of talks. You know NSA, but not just NSA, also the Chinese, the Russians, even the Swiss are doing um, mass surveillance. So even in countries which we consider it safe until now, things are changing uh, into the wrong direction. So even in Switzerland, uh, we have now two laws which allow for mass surveillance with selector searches, so word-based stuff and everything. I had to talk about this topic yesterday. If you want to look it up, what's possible there. And um, what we need is we need um, the contrary, so mass encryption and mass anonymization in the second step uh, just to um, stop this because politically things seem a little bit, uh, seem a little bit uh, difficult to change at the moment at least. Um, however, uh, the PEP Foundation, where I am member at um, in the council, it's the Swiss Foundation, uh, we also uh, we have a political standing. The, the foundation is controlled by political activists, by people like Volker Birk and me from the CCC, and also Rena Tangens and Padelun from Germany. They are also known for their activism inside Digital Courage. So we are serious about this kind of stuff. Um, and of course, uh, if possible and if it makes sense, we also support political projects which have impact. So for example, we supported this referendum here, Stop Pöpf, uh, uh, that's a lawful interception law. We failed with it, but however, we tried it at least. Um, well, philosophy of PEP. So we, we fully subscribe to the cypherpunk manifesto, and I have here some key sentences. So privacy is necessary for an open society in the electronic age. A private matter is something one doesn't want the whole world to know. Privacy is the power to selectively reveal oneself to the world. So this project is about fulfilling these propositions here. Um, and of course, we need to act. We cannot just make politics and wait that tools get better. We just we just have to take action. And um, so cypherpunks write code. We know that someone has to write software to defend privacy. And since we can't get privacy unless we all do, we are going to write it. And uh, of course, uh, the PEP project itself, as you will see later, is not really a crypto project because we are not doing own crypto. We are just using 
crypto already there. However, that's also quite a lot of work. We need to be cross-plat. We need really to have it on all platforms running and everything must be automatized, but that we'll see later. So uh, another uh, important point is that we publish the code so that other people can take it up and help us in that. Um, and we don't care if someone is against it because mass surveillance is also being done without any consent. Uh, I mean, you know, in Switzerland, you can probably say the, uh, that the people said yes to a mass surveillance law, but at the general level with Russians, Chinese and Americans and other countries doing, uh, doing all of these kind of things, I mean, there is no consent, at least also not from countries which are outside of their legislation because they are uh, most massively, they, they are spying on foreigners. So they are just doing it, and so we can also do the same, on, uh, just on the other side. Um, however, uh, 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 for this to work, we also need cooperation. So this is a kind of, uh, here it's written, for privacy to be widespread, it must be part of a social contract, people must come in, uh, to, and together deploy these systems for the common good. Privacy only extends so far as the cooperation of one's fellows in society. So, well, why, why do we need this project? Um, after the Snowden revelations, I mean, already before in, uh, at the CCC, for example, in Switzerland, we did like self-defense courses, or uh, um, I mean, today they are known as crypto parties. And um, m m of course, the numbers of people increased after the Snowden revelations, uh, but we, we had to learn that the people are not really able to use these tools in the end. I mean, you explain them public key cryptography, what is a private key, what is a public key, what is a revocation certificate, what is a passphrase. And for normal people, I would say like my mother, that's just too much. That's completely not feasible. Uh, she she's able to install an app, for example, and then probably she needs a little bit help for the mail address or something, and then, and then it should just work. So no further steps needed, and that's exactly the the idea we have with this project here, and uh, now coming to email, which we want to protect first. That's the, the first channel we want to protect. Um, there are two important things here. The, the first thing is that uh, email usage is still growing, so almost everyone who uses the internet must have an email address. Either, even if you are just using Facebook or Twitter, usually you need to set it up with an email address. Uh, and also the notifications, by the way, which you receive could be encrypted if, for example, Twitter would allow to um, to save a public key up there at their system. Um, that's not, that's, uh, all of this is not done. Facebook does it to some extent, but well, Facebook is completely another story because they do lots of surveillance just inside the system anyhow. Um, and email is also one of the yeah, still best functioning federated identity systems. So as said, everyone needs an email address to identify himself, to have an account. So we need to protect this channel because uh, flight tickets are, fl are, are going around like in clear text or um, uh, probably even, do even medical documents, at least in Switzerland, there are lots of people just uh, uh, sending things around like this and this, this must be protected. Um, messages should be encrypted and signed. So signed, is, uh, signed emails would also be a nice thing. Pep does this, of course, automatically, because if, uh, if you do that and you can check that the signature is correct, um, you can also uh, mitigate against phishing attacks, of course. I mean, if you can detect that the, the message was sent by uh, a key you already verified, um, then yeah. This should be uh, a way. And I mean, today in, with, with things like WannaCry and NotPetya and stuff that uh, could have been helpful uh, in lots of places like hospitals or something where these things started somehow. Um, so as said, um, GNUPG is one of the, the best known Im implementations of, 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 of the OpenPGP standard. So there is the last one is RFC 4880. Um, explaining how it works, and uh, but on the console you cannot expect people to use it. And with the graphical tools you have, like Enig Mail or uh, plugins for Outlook and stuff, which are already around, uh, usually you, you still need to carry out some manual steps. You need to invoke the key generation, and then they ask you about passphrases, uh, perhaps. So these are things which are not feasible for normal users. So privacy. Um, 
needs to be easy and not just good. So we have already good uh, privacy, we, uh, tools are there, but uh, the usability must be uh, enhanced. So we need privacy by default, as we, as we say, so the, the, that we change the, um, the, the standard behavior. So every time when it's possible, uh, messages should go out encrypted. So what is the uh, approach of PEP organizationally? That's probably also um, um, interesting and also important because we, we saw in the cypherpunk manifesto that you, you also need to spread these systems. And how, how do you want to do that if you don't have a concept how to, how to bring that into companies, for example? So the first thing the PEP project uh, uh, did uh, indeed was um, uh, creating an Outlook plugin because if you like it or not, uh, Outlook is one of the most used uh, uh, um, um, mail user agents on desktops. And for that purpose, because the foundation which I am representing is not doing business or selling stuff, um, for that purpose, um, the PEP, in the PEP project also there also exist companies which are in, in Switzerland and Luxembourg serving different kinds of entities. The foundation itself is in Switzerland and tax-free, and as I said in the beginning, controlled by, by activists of privacy and um, freedom of information and so forth. Uh, what's also important to know is that the, um, the foundation owns the, um, the core code of PEP, so uh, you will see it later, uh, there is um, an architecture with, uh, with an engine and with uh, bindings or adapters around it, such that you can easily use uh, uh, the PEP functionality, uh, the automatization uh, steps we do. Um, and the, uh, all of this core code is, is, is in the ownership of the foundation and belongs to the foundation itself. So you cannot just buy the PEP foundation and dissolve anything, everything, because it's just, it belongs to itself. It's just not possible. You can perhaps uh, exchange the people, and this will also happen at some point, of course, but the, um, the things are locked in the, in the, uh, into the foundation. Okay. Um, how is now this privacy by default principles achieved? Well, uh, instead of writing manuals how to use GNU PG, we just automatize uh, the steps. So that means concretely when you install a, a, a PEP, um, for each email account you have, we st as said, we start with email, um, but you can also have other um, identities like XMPP or whatever later on. But for email, of course, you, you might have different email accounts, one for business, one for private purposes. And then for each of these, uh, a key pair is generated RSA 4096. It's just default setting we have. And, um, and, uh, and when you send out an email, uh, then the, the public key is attached such that other PEP clients can automatically import uh, the key. So this is the easiest way we we um, we see to do it. So because it's also compatible, if you, for example, receive an email with an attachment uh, and the public key there, you can just um, right-click import, and then you can uh, communicate also with PEP, people using PEP. Uh, if you, for some reason, need to deactivate this, there is also passive mode. We call it, you can uh, click on this, and then um, the, the keys are not attached anymore. Uh, by default, despite if you received from the contact you are writing to already an email that was, that, that in the header has some information about PEP. So there is an XPEP version information, and if, if the PEP client sees that, then it says, okay, the other one has PEP anyway, so I can, I can attach the key. But um, it, it might be a problem in some cases to always have these attachments, uh, so you can also deactivate it if, if, if necessary. Um, we don't rely on key servers or, or any other centralized platform, so we don't have a PEP platform which you need to uh, subscribe to, uh, like authors have. Uh, so it's just software for the end user devices. And uh, the thing with the key servers, I mean, um, you can use them, you can opt in to, you, to, to look up the keys on the key server, but as you know, everyone can just upload keys to the key server, um, and that happens in, uh, in some cases, so this is probably not so a good idea to do it by default, so, uh, because otherwise people m might receive messages they cannot decrypt because uh, someone just put the key up there. And you can also uh, easily 
verify the, the contact uh, using trust words. Uh, what are trust words? Trust words are just um, uh, representations of fingerprints with words in natural language. So we just map uh, um, a four-digit hex block to a word, so you can uh, you can uh, you can have up to uh, up to 65,536 uh, words. Uh, the lists we have are from LibreOffice. Usually they are a little bit smaller, so you lose some entropy, but not much. So usually it's 50, um, So each block is 15 point something bits still. So it should be enough entropy there. Um, and yes, as I said. Uh, PEP also wants to stay compatible to things already around, so to just um, fit into the ecosystem, which is already to some extent there. There are not so many people encrypting emails, but uh, if someone is, the, it should be possible to have interoperability here. Um, whenever there is a decision, privacy versus security, that's, that's not the same. Uh, it's a privacy project privacy will be cho chosen. So that's the reason why the web of trust by default is not used. Um, PEP is also designed for multiple communication channels. So we will add further communication transports into the engine. That, uh, we will, uh, the next thing which will happen quite soon uh, will be XMPP, so that you can also um, uh, reach your friends if they are using chat. or other things which um, are uh, used. So um, this goes um, up to GNU. Uh, so in the end, we want to have GNUnet, that's a peer-to-peer -peer thing, um, to have uh, also metadata protected. So, But we'll just look what people are using and add, and add more and more stuff, and also other crypto standards. And But we, 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 we will never do the crypto ourselves. We'll just use the libraries already there. and. Uh, uh, also help in uh, uh, also help in, in audi auditing them if not already done. Um, a, a special thing with PEP is that also private keys uh, can be um, synchronized, so that you can read your emails across different devices. Um, I will explain this a little bit later because that's of, of course something which will interest some of you how this works. And it's without a cloud or something, which where you need to put the, the, the key up there. OK, oh, it's already here. So OK, uh, the, um, it, it works like this. If you, if you, ha if you have um, an email address which you want to use on different devices, let's say your iPhone and your Thunderbird installation on Windows, then you just configure this email address on, on both devices. And then uh, both devices, independently of each author, will, of course, because they have PEP, generate keys. So they have completely independent from each other uh, uh, key pairs. But then um, uh, these devices start to send, um, we call them beacon messages, or just like technical emails, to the mailbox, such that the, uh, so, uh, one, one of these, let's say, starts and says, I am here. The other one sees that and says, oh, cool, you are there. Oh, there is your public key. I take it. And then the same thing which you can do with outside uh, communication parts, you can also do with your own devices. So just show the fingerprints in form of trust words. And then, uh, then you have your both devices like here. Here you see it, uh, desktop and, and, um, and another system. And then the system asks you all of a sudden, do you want to build a device group? And you say, yes, trust words confirmed. And then you have a secure channel. I mean, you trusted the, 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 this thing manually with, with the fingerprints in form of trust words. And then the private keys of both devices will be transferred to both devices. So you can read all your past communications. Of course, if you don't want to have a specific email address on your cell phone because you say this thing is hacked anyway, uh, I mean, Android phones and stuff might be a little bit difficult if you don't get updates. You can still say, uh, this email address I just use on, on, the, um, on, the, on the desktop. And another one, which is not so important, whatever that means, you, you just use everywhere. And of course, the key sync is not done for all mail addresses automatically, but just for the ones where a connection is possible by the same email address. And this you can also do uh, with other protocols. Uh, then, even in, uh, then even in a synced form, I mean, if you have online communication uh, where you can synchronize things directly, then you can do that. Email is, uh, is, is, uh, is, is async kind of stuff, so you need some messages, uh, some messages going around. 
uh, such that you can they can communicate and then you can uh, build up this device group. And these messages, of course, are not shown to the user. So these messages, it's just written PEP synchronization message. So if you would have a device using that mail address, uh, not with PEP, you would see some messages, and then it's written just delete it or ignore it. And uh, it will also be deleted automatically when, when the process was done. So it's just, you just uh, use the mailbox to do this process. Uh, that's the easiest way to do it. And, and by design, it's a peer-to-peer -peer approach. Because you don't, you don't need to put the key on a server and protect it with a passphrase or something, like authors are doing in the email or post-email area. So GNUnet is the other vision we have. We also work with the GNUnet project, so specifically with Christian Grotov and authors of his project together. Uh, we want to uh, route all the traffic uh, through, um, yeah, uh, a completely crazy project here, which uh, more or less replaces the whole internet stack. Um, it, uh, GNUnet even has uh, a known name system called GNU name system, GNS, which is completely decentralized. And you have, I think, 40 subsystems. Uh, and one is called Cadet. And this one you can use then to make messaging. And why not use that to send emails in the end uh, w without relying on the email infrastructure? If it's possible, we'll do that. And uh, this project's already very old, but it, it never achieved a state where you can actually use it on a, on a daily basis. And so, um, yeah, that's the reason why we're working together here. So probably we can make GNUnet to some extent even usable. PEP itself is free software uh, because we like more like this decentralized certificate authorities thing. There is also CIA cert a domain here. Um, just install the root certificate. Uh, then you can look. Uh, then you can use this site. In fact, otherwise, let's encrypt. Um, um, and um, yeah, uh, we also do uh, a code audit, or we are in the in the process of it. It's a little bit uh, a mess, to be honest, because we have other things else to do. But we we, we want to audit everything we are doing at least uh, uh, at the latest uh, when, when it is released, so that you know, OK, this, kind, this piece of software I'm using was audited. And we will also make sure that we provide instructions to achieve reproducible builds. There are also tools for that. So we, we uh, will try to do everything, let's say, right, as far as we can. So there is already an audit for the engine that's uh, more or less a year old now, so we, we, we'll, we'll have to do another one. And all kinds of errors were found, buffer overflows, memory leaks, the usual thing. Because um, yeah, the PEP engine down here, um, this thing here, is written in C99, so that, so, so that it runs on, on all all kinds of, of platforms, even on such without MMUs, because we also envision to help in encrypting IoT stuff or whatever else might be possible. So why not if it, if it works? And then there are adapters. Uh, we call them adapters. Uh, technically, they are bindings, but we call them adapters because we try to adapt to the, to the language style, which is uh, typical. So um, things in Python should be Pythonic and not just uh, uh, some hack that you can just use the functions, but it should really feel like Python. So, so we call them adapters because we try to adapt to the environment of the, of the programmer. And the, the functions you have in the end are things like encrypt, uh, encrypt, decrypt, get trustworthy. So it's really easy in a way that you cannot do anything wrong as an application programmer who has no clue of cryptography. So that's the idea here. So we, we try to abstract. And um, so it, it, should n it should not be easy just for um, users, but also for programmers to, uh, to implement um, uh, cryptography. Um, well, here is an example of uh, the architecture for desktops. So, for example, if you have Thunderbird, then there is the Enigmail plugin. Uh, we have a cooperation with Enigmail. Um, next version, we already postponed the deadline. I, I don't know how many times, so we just say it's finished when it's finished now. Um, uh, the next ending mail version 2.0 will have PEP inside, or it will provide a way to, to install PEP silently, such that users without any clue can just engage in um, encrypted communications. And yeah, 
uh, for Enig Mail, here it's still written that's a service. I mean, uh, there is also a JavaScript adapter then, uh, which can be, because Enig Mail is written in JavaScript. So uh, there is a JavaScript adapter, um, which um, is a JSON server, um, uh, where you can just send, uh, c communicate uh, through it to access the engine functionality and do everything which PEP can. And also for the Outlook area here, then there is a, a COM adapter, so for uh, for you to use PEP functionality with C Sharp and yeah. For Carmail, by the way, there is a student project, um, a, a student handed in uh, a PEP implementation for Carmail as bachelor thesis, but we somehow lost contact. We should probably. <laughs> have a look at that because it would be uh, interesting to have it. Um, yeah. So what, what is currently really available? Um, uh, for Outlook, there is a release um, which uh, is usable. For Android, you can, uh, on Google Play Store and then on the F3, you can try a PEP out, how it feels. Uh, th there is a beta release for that. So you just write pretty easy privacy, then you find it, because entering this symbol might be not so easy. Yeah? Um, and uh, for Enig Mail, uh, there is this cooperation. It's almost feature complete. We have more like packaging issues. How should we distribute that? Should we, pr um, should we uh, uh, provide probably also a bundle? We are thinking on providing kind of a bundle like uh, the Tor browser bundle where everything is just inside and you can just go on? Or should it be more like having packages everywhere or should it be just everything? So th th there's a lot of stuff to do here and we also need people. So if someone is interested in working on these areas, just contact us. Uh, we might even find financing for that. Uh, and for iOS, that's a little bit uh, a sad story. Uh, um, in, uh, the, the iOS project uh, should have been the first one which exists, because iOS is a little bit uh, a, a sad story in two ways, because there is no open source PGP client for iOS. There is just uh, IPG Mail, I think is the name. It's a commercial application uh, where there is no source code, and PEP will provide the first uh, iOS app where you also have the source code. Um, and, uh, and also jailbreak instructions, if possible. So that's not always uh, guaranteed, but if possible, on the foundation side, we'll also show you how you can install it um, on a jailbreak device. <clears throat> um, and this, the first sad story here uh, is that um, um, we, we had an agreement with a company in Canada uh, that was doing an email client, uh, Inbox Cube, and and um, uh, that idea was that they put PEP inside. It was, everything was written on Objective-C and uh, they, they somehow in the end, because the architecture was a little bit difficult, didn't manage to do it properly. So we, 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 we started to do it ourselves. And then also our developers said that it's just not feasible to continue like this. Uh, the refactoring effort is bigger than just rewriting it. And then we stopped the project. And in, the, in mid of July 2016, we started uh, an own iOS project, uh, which is this new PEP for iOS, and that's completely written in Swift, and um, we think with a clean architecture, and PEP is automatically inside. So that's the reason why th things are also taking longer than we yeah, planned. Uh, but it's not yet feature complete, it's still in alpha phase. It works already to some extent, but there is still another version uh, now for the public to try out. But if you want to try it out directly using Xcode and stuff and putting it in your device, you cannot just contact us. We can help you with that. So um, what, what other adapters are available? I already said that there is this COM server adapter for Outlook, for example. So um, And uh, for Android devices, usually the Java native interface is used, but you can also have probably server-side applications which need um, Java interfaces, so there is also a, solu a solution for that. For Enigmail JavaScript, but also for browser add-ons, by the way. I, I mean, we have also the idea that we provide add-ons for browsers such that you can uh, uh, encrypt and decrypt your messages for the different webmailers which are around, but always in a way that your keys are strictly on your device and uh, the, the browser uh, plugin would then um, connect with the JSON adapter and the JSON adapter with the engine. The engine 
would do the, the cryptographic work uh, through GNU PG and back and forth. So, so that's a little bit the idea here. <coughs> Qt adapter that's relevant for car mail or other uh, Qt applications in the in the in the K KD area. Um, also, uh, Colab systems wanted to do something here, but somehow they didn't. Uh, um, because they have a group there with uh, also with client side um, installations where they where they they were interested in that. Then there's also Python adapter that's handy for almost everything, also for ticketing systems, by instance. Why not? You can also uh, encrypt your notifications to the users if somehow the ticketing system got the the public key. So that's a fully opportunistic approach. You just send the public key there, and then you receive all the notifications encrypted. Objective-C adapter, of course, needed for iOS, so for apps written in Objective-C or Swift, and these both languages are compatible. So how does this look like, so that you have an impression a little bit? So first of all, one thing which, uh, we, I mean, this, uh, this um, the Android story must also be told. I mean, this is a car, no, a car 9 fork. We tried to cooperate with the Car 9, uh, car nine uh, project and um, proposed to... Um, 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 yeah, to make a pull request, but they said they have no interest in our approach here. They want to continue with open keychain, so they have an own approach, and they are not interested in, in things besides email because uh, our client will uh, also then be able to, um, uh, to reach contacts on XMPP and other things. So that's a little bit the, the idea here. And we also changed, of course, the interface a lot. Uh, in in, in, in Car 9, you have just like, I think, random colors or no idea uh, for the users. Uh, uh, here, when you see colors, this is like a trusted contact here. This is a contact where you have a public key at least, so you can write him encrypted. And if you would have a contact you mistrust because you think his key is rocked or something, then it would appear as a red square. Uh, but uh, something which Pep never does is to stop you to communicate. So if you want still, if you want, if you if you prefer to to still write encrypted, even if it's pro, uh, um, even if the NSA can read it or whatever, then you can still do it. I mean, it just will appear red then. So how does this look like concretely now when you have a message? So if you don't have a public key, uh, you are in the, in, the, in the mode that you can just write an email, uh, an email like nowadays mostly, uh, just like uh, um, um, uh, unencrypted, will go out unencrypted, but the public key will be attached. So if the other one has PEP, you can already receive um, uh, an email back, which is then uh, encrypted. If that happens, you see it here, then it gets yellow. Or if you are writing a message and uh, and you have a public key, the message will have this yellow coloring. So this is traffic light semantics because there is also green you can achieve. That's We think it's it might also be a little bit like a gamification concept. People probably want to become green. So they will probably try this handshake process, which we provide here, and then these trust words are shown, and then you can uh, use a, a separate uh, a side channel and ask you, the partner if they see the same words on the screen, and if that um, happens, you can just say yes, yes on both sides, and then it, uh, the channel turns, uh, the, um, yeah, the, the appearance turns green here of the window. Um, here you see that you can also, um, use PGP fingerprints. Uh, you can also use uh, long trust words, as um, some of you surely will know. Usually, to have two complete fingerprints, you need 24 digit hexablocks, because any, uh, each of these fingerprints is, um, um, is, has 10 four digit blocks. So, but because we think that's probably a little bit too much, we just halved them. So that, that you lose uh, lots of entropy, of course, but if you want to, uh, to have more entropy, you can just say, show long trust words, and if, then you have 20 words. And you can also compare them, of course, directly when you meet someone um, looking at the screens. Why not? These are just words. You can just look at it, and if, if, they're, if these are the same, you can go ahead. Of course, uh, because we have different uh, people talking different languages, you also need different uh, languages for the trust words. Uh, total fallback is, of course, English. 
but uh, uh, we have also Catalan, German, Spanish, French, Turkish, yeah, and more will be added. So that's an example now here in um, in um, yeah Spanish. Um, if your partner doesn't have PEP, you can also uh, just compare fingerprints. So here, um, here you also see that uh, if each word is a fingerprint and you want to have the full trust words, you need 20 words because we just concatenate them for now. Probably there will be another approach, hashing them and stuff, but that's still work in progress. Um, and so here, here you see the three basic colors. So if you have a contact which you also trust because you manually uh, did the trust process, the handshake process, then it will appear green. And also if you are about to write an email and you have a, a public key from someone you already um, trusted, then it will show green. And, and uh, so you have, a, a, you have a signaling at the pair message level and, and, and at the pair user level. So at your contact list, as I showed before, you also see the people with different colors and you know how, how, how private you can communicate with them. So the same applies, of course, with a little bit not design for the other software we have. Um, so this would be Outlook. So uh, there's also text here. If you are colorblind, for example, you need, of course, a concept here. So we just have text here now. In other cases, we also have symbols. Um, unsecure, if it's about to go out, or if it went out unencrypted. Secure, for it was at least encrypted. And um, secure and trusted, if you also put trust on it by ma uh, manual. That's the only manual process you usually need to do if you want to have trusted communication. So the, uh, that's a handshaking process for Outlook, so somehow uh, the same. And for Enigmail, um, I, I, I wanted to show uh, live how this looks like and how, 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 fa how fast you can enter in, in, in encrypted and also a verified communications. Uh, but um, the, the MacBook where I have this stuff running um, doesn't work here. So I can just show it at the Swiss village if you want, or just like individually, if you want to see it live. Um, so benefits of PEP, so um, it's, it is um, yeah, mother proof, let's say, or father proof. My father is also unable to use such stuff. In this case, it, it, <laughs> it's, it's a general problem. Um, so it, it, it users uh, shouldn't need to do anything particular. So th the decisions that PEP, that PEP makes should just be uh, um, good. Yeah. And then, and then, uh, I mean, uh, the same which we are uh, the, the same the same things which we are teaching at crypto parties. We can also just put into code, and then you have kind of a protocol because that's what you have in the end if you if you just write steps down in, in, as code and people can just engage in end-to-end in, 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 uh, -end encrypt communications uh, like this. Um, and also very important that we, there's no specific provider, so you can just use PEP for email now with any email account. There is no restriction. And we don't know as PEP what you are doing with PEP. Probably you ca we can see that you downloaded it, but that's, that's it. And then this bridging function, because usually you have a little bit of problem that you, you, you install a new app and then you don't have friends there, vendor login. Um, so with PEP, we have the very general approach to just add more communication channels and more cryptography um, methods that you can use here, or which are typical in these areas. I mean, for, for, uh, for XMPP, it would be OTR or OMIMO. Uh, we can just use libraries to engage in such communications too. We also want that PEP is, uh, is standardized. So um, uh, we, are, we, didn't, uh, we, we didn't do that much yet, but uh, we have the plan to write uh, internet drafts and we're also engaged in, in internet engineering task force uh, meetings and, com and, and um, communications already to have this uh, process going. It, it's of course a thing which takes years and you have no guarantee that you will get an RFC number, but that doesn't matter. The most important thing is that, that, is that uh, we, will, we get our stuff documented and that we have running code which can be used. And if someone doesn't like the engine, the adapters, whatever, you can also 
stay compatible by just doing the same or discussing with us and then we change it. So that's a little bit the idea here. We want we, uh, interoperability is a goal of this project. So we, 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 we just uh, want to um, to fit into the into the, um, the ecosystem. So um, f uh, talking of visions, uh, here you see what what we envision. I mean, that's uh, that's just a made-up example that doesn't exist in practice yet. So, but uh, why not? I mean, you could have one app where you can just say, okay, I have Gmail, Yahoo, Outlook, iCloud, WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter here, and I just want to reach my friends in the most in the in the most uh, um, private uh, in the in the most private way possible. And then you would also see here the dif different identities. I mean, this is now a, a user that you have called Rick. Um, I think you know the movie uh, behind this kind of stuff. Um, and uh, this user might have different identities. He might be on Twitter, or on, he might have a work email address, a private email address. He, he might have an alias for some of these addresses here. And also a phone number, which uh, indeed is also uh, an identifier an identifier for uh, for Signal uh, or for WhatsApp, which is used there. So we will also need uh, some YANA registrations, I think, uh, for a certain um, um, communication channels, such that you uh, such that you can say, okay, I am about to contact a Signal user, a WhatsApp user, or a Ring user, or a, to a Tox user, or whatever. So there, there are lots of, of URIs missing here. So you see the project is completely crazy, uh, and we are at the email level now. So just to say. Um, so, okay, that probably I already said. Uh, of course, uh, one of the biggest problems uh, that we have nowadays with the tools which, which are already easy to use, like WhatsApp, Signal, ProtonMail, whatever, is that they are just, uh, they, they, I mean, you need to use their platform. That's the first thing. Uh, for some of this, uh, 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 in, uh, in some cases, uh, this is a real problem. I mean, for example, in the case of WhatsApp, they have all your metadata when you're logged in, logged out, whom to, commu uh, to whom to, to you communicated to, how long, and everything. So there are FBI records showing that. In the case of Signal, it's much better in that area. But uh, that's, of course, a little bit a problem if, if you have uh, like a, a platform which can be shut down, censored, and or, or which can even collect metadata, because in, in, in lots of in lots of the mass surveillance situations we have, they are more interested in the metadata. So if you use uh, WhatsApp, even if the crypto is fine and not backdoored and stuff, they still have the metadata. That's uh, quite an issue. Um, then there are also better tools, I think, like Ring or Tox. Uh, they, they, they are a little bit in the spirit like GNUnet, so fully decentralized, peer-to-peer, -peer, everything like this. So they have a DHT, a distributed hash table to, to, for addressing. The addressing is done decentralized. But if you install Ring, for example, which was released some days ago, uh, then you, you see that you have no friends. So you need to, to start to find the user base first. And the other thing is that uh, my impression is that it still eats a little bit too much battery um, because for the DHT, to, to, to have the DHT working, you need uh, everyone participating, and they also um, do that with the cell phones. That's something in GNU-Net is a little bit uh, um, envisioned uh, in, the, in, the, in the sense that um, um, if GNU-Net realizes it's, it's, it's running on a, on a mobile device, that you don't use it that much for such purposes, or you just switch GNU-Net stuff. Um, I mean, you can still send messages, receive them, but you don't participate in this, in this, in the, in the um, uh, yeah in the DHT kind of in the inten intensive stuff there. So we also have this rating system with the colors. That's probably also something which is uh, for normal people, let's say, uh, helpful. Just that they can directly see how private they are. Of course, if their device is not backdoored or malware was installed, of course, in that case you are, you have lost anyways. But um, if the device is fine, uh, then uh, this privacy status with the colors might be helpful. And uh, we have also this interesting construction uh, with community on one side, commercial things on the other side, so that we can really separate this. 
and, 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 and that commercial interests cannot destroy the community interests and that we also can as foundation support projects which from a commercial point of view are not interesting. I mean there are lots of tools around which we, where you can put encryption but you cannot sell this kind of stuff. So not even in support area, uh, not even with Red Hat models, nothing. So uh, we, we want to support uh, all of these projects if possible. And that's something which is, um, of course, better done by no, uh, a non-commercial entity, which is run by activists, which understand that. So then uh, the, the, uh, the, I already said that um, you can synchronize keys, but if you can use that system for keys, you can also use it to synchronize the trust. Uh, I mean, um, such that you, you, uh, if you already trusted someone with the iPhone, that the, that the, the same trust is also transferred to the to the other device. So you can uh, you you have the same you are on the same page on on all of your devices. That's something easy to add. It will be added. It's not yet in. Um, and also you can synchronize calendar and address data, not by supporting all uh, address books locally, but just by mapping from one book, uh, from one address book to the other. I mean, um, it will of course happen that not all fields can be mapped deterministically, but things like names, addresses, email addresses, um, phone numbers, there usually you find the mapping from Outlook to some Thunderbird thing. Why not? And, and that, then you can, of course, do that. And then you have uh, like synchronization of addresses and calendars without a cloud. So you don't need Google or, or iCloud um, or something like this. Then that's a little bit uh, a very new thing. Um, I mean, it depends if you know of what I'm talking now. But <laughs> I mean, there is this web of trust thing where, um, where everyone signs um, each other. And then the, the, the social graph is put on on the key servers usually, so everyone can see whom you trusted. And Christian Grotov from the GNU uh, projects, like GNU Taller, GNU Net, uh, and so forth, has uh, another idea here. He calls it Fog of Trust. The idea is um, uh, that, that um, um, if, if uh, two persons don't trust each other, but both of them have people uh, which uh, they trust, then uh, um, he, he proposes a method, which uh, a method which will be mathematically also checked by Indra and friends, uh, to uh, to um, to make an intersection of the contacts uh, they both trust. And if uh, a certain cardinality, that means a certain number of people, is achieved, you can automatically say it's green. Of course, this can be attacked by mating up contacts and stuff like this, but um, there is at least an approach here to have like web of trust without exposing the social graph, so privacy preserving. And, and you don't even know then uh, why you got green. So it's just that there are enough contacts which you both trust. So that's a little bit the idea. It's um, probably also a question of, of the threshold you use, also how many people you need to trust um, um, together. I think I should hurry up a little bit. Uh, we have also other ideas. Uh, probably you, you saw the GNU Taller talk. That's a payment system uh, where you have a wallet in your browser or on your devices, uh, and then you can just go around and, and buy things in a very easy way and, and with cash properties so that you are anonymous when buying something, but if you sell something, you are transparent to the state such that you are still taxable. But um, you can also just um, send money to your friends that's supported by GNU Taller so that um, anonymity is preserved. Um, and so uh, you can, uh, so there's the idea to have a pay by mail feature and also a pay to spam feature. That's a little bit a more complicated thing. I mean, in the GNU Net system, there is the, there is also the, um, the, um, uh, the GNU, uh, um, in GNU Net, there's also the GNU name system and there you can, of course, then define zones uh, like companies or, or corporations which you trust, which are, which don't send spam out, and uh, by defining uh, policies on your devices that you 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 want to receive from all of these trusted bodies uh, or uh, uh, people in the zones, uh, emails, um, um, 
that, that's possible without payment. Otherwise, you can say that you, uh, you uh, that they should be charged if they are not in a, in a trusted zone. Um, also, the support uh, of um, yeah, of uh, also support for hardware um, tokens, such that you can store your your private key on on HSMs. Um, uh, is, is a thing we are working on with, with NitroKey. So we are applying for an AU project here where we try to put all these pieces together here uh, such that, um, yeah, we have a, like a bigger system where privacy is restored again. Uh, if, if you want to know details here, I think best person would be Christian, but you can also ask me and then we can make up a contact just to show what we are doing here. And then we are, we are also an increasing number of interesting corporations um, now. Uh, one thing is that we have a shared ownership agreement with the GNUnet project. Uh, why do we do that? I mean, uh, we have a multi-licensing strategy towards the, um, the companies. So they are allowed to also provide closed source software if they want, or if it's necessary for a certain uh, customer. Um, as long as they don't change the engine and the adapters, as long as they don't put backdoors in. So we will uh, enforce them to have audits there. And um, this, uh, this agreement is very important for the iOS area because in, in, the, in the App Store, you are not allowed to have GPL, uh, GPL software. So you need an exception there. And we, we got this exception already now from, for GNUnet. For the PEP code base, we don't need that because um, uh, it's our own code, of course. Uh, but there is also another issue with GNUPG there. Uh, GNUPG is GPL, uh, GPL licensed, and um, yeah, there, um, the decision until now was that um, it stays like this. So we are not uh, not able to use GNUPG for iOS. So we are we are using Net PGP there. That this is uh, an Open PGP implementation once started by the Net BSD uh, project. And um, yeah, I think we have uh, we re we have uh, we did a rewrite of most of the parts I think already, and are just doing that to have a solution for iOS. But of course, it's not so good as GNUPG. GNUPG is better, has more mitigations against different kinds of attacks. Uh, but it's just what we we have now. So then we also have a cooperation with Isaac Switzerland. Um, uh, where we applied together uh, to uh, ISOC's Beyond the Net program to get funding uh, to make these internet drafts, to, so to have PEP standardized. And uh, we already were in Prague some weeks ago uh, discussing, uh, also showing a little bit what we are trying to do. And uh, as far as I can say, directions were like, yeah, it's needed. Just le let's just look at it. And we need to split up all the things we are doing because it's a real big thing. So there will be a bunch of internet drafts here. Enig uh, Enigmail was already said. Then uh, you may know the, uh, the Reva and David Logan Foundation. They are known uh, for, for running in, in investigative journalism events. Uh, in Berlin and London, there were already some. And they also gave us money to make tools, um, in, that, in that sense, PEP, so that uh, investigative journalists can engage more easily in secure communications. And with the Vau Holland Foundation, um, which is, um, I think, best known um, to support WikiLeaks, they will also help us in, uh, fi in, in uh, donations from the EU because we are in Switzerland. So if people want to donate to the PEP project, to the foundation uh, part, then this is possible uh, soon via the Vau Holland Stiftung. And for the GNUnet thing, because as said, we want to route email traffic and author messaging through GNUnet, we uh, um, will be doing, I think, as of October, uh, a GNUnet uh, simulation uh, uh, for 10,000, 100,000, and 1 million peers. Uh, first, assuming um, some, uh, I mean, user behavior. We need to find out how, how, people, uh, how, how people communicate. Uh, how many emails they send, how many chat messages, more or less like this. I mean, there, 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 there will be some sociological studies, I think, about that. And then we will uh, run, a, a, create a model and, and, and uh, create GNUnet um, peers doing that kind of stuff. And, and then we can see if there are scalability problems to roll this out massively, because that's the plan.
So we want to see if it works. So they, uh, the um, NLNet Foundation, which is based here in, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, gave us uh, 30,000 euros for that. We still need some more funding uh, for, uh, because the project is a 100,000 euro project, we estimate. Yeah, and that's it. So it's uh, more like a uh, Roth overview a little bit, uh, but I'm quite sure there might be some questions. So first, thank you for the talk, please. Everybody yeah. give some applause. <laughs> well, if you have questions, please come to the microphone. We don't have too much time for questions, but there might be something. Nothing, really. Do you really believe all of this? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who wants? Yes, someone. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Thanks for the talk. So you mentioned web mails, right? What? what? You mentioned web mails that you have yes. some plans. Yes, yeah. But I think that there it's very difficult because yeah. the, I mean, everything is below the address bar can be faked and so the, the web mail provider can always, if, if there is clear text below it, the, the, let's say the address bar, the, the, the one sending you the web page will always be able to read the content of your email. So you still have to trust him, right? Yeah, no, I mean, we do the work before uh, that. I, I mean, um, there is already a project called Mailvelope doing that to some extent, but it's not that easy to use and it do doesn't have this trust rating system and stuff. But um, you can just put ciphertext into Google Mail or, or GMX and get, I mean, there's even an API for that. And when you get ciphertext back, you can get it out. Then you are at the browser uh, add on level and from there you go on to the engine. So there's no way. Uh, the, the, the mail provider can do anything there. It, they can, of course, just make the work more difficult, incompatible, whatever stuff like this can be, can be done, of course. But um, it, should, it should still work. It's, it's just lots of work because you have different browsers and you have lots of mail providers. But in fact, you don't have that many which are dominant. So uh, there are lots of small ones, but um, yeah, you know which, which ones are the bigger ones. So. Okay, so you don't type the email directly in the web browser, but in another... In another yeah, we do it before, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got it. Yeah. If it's about encrypting one, yeah. Uh, what about the web uh, fog of trust thing? Yeah. So, because, let's say you're using some social network stuff like, uh, I don't know, Indeed, Sing or something like that. Yeah. It says, uh, you know this person, maybe you know this and this and this person, and then you can also find by this function that you can do some intelligence of the, per of on the other persons. Because, so let's say you add somebody, then you see, ah, there's a person, mm -hmm. and, and he's a colleague yeah, yeah. of the company, and so you get some information about the other person because he gets suggested, suggested to you. And so if you have this fog of trust thing, you could maybe have, let's say, 20 sock puppets yeah, it, that, 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 know, that, that know people for some extent yeah, yeah. because they get a little bit known to the people. And then you can get, gather intelligence on, on this thing like you have a lot of sock puppets. How yeah, do you yeah, yeah, fight no, against it? Yeah, no, it, that, that's clear. I mean, that's, uh, first of all, it's a threshold question. I mean, how many people must it be? And then, and then again, they, they can, of course, send people out and create lots of... Uh, uh, yeah, puppets, as you, as you call them, to, uh, to just achieve um, this, uh, this green mode. Okay. And uh, of course, it's difficult because uh, this is uh, automatizing trust, which is not possible. Usually, it, it would just be an idea to probably we, we need to, to signal some trust level, but not showing it directly green. That's that's usability uh, uh, question. So it's just it's it's not that we will put it in by sh uh, for sure. It's just that we will implement it together with Christian, and then try it out how it. So feels. there are projects like CA cert where you have to bring your yeah. your passport, and then somebody is, gives you trust because they see saw the passport. But no, the trust the trust you give directly with the, the, the with the with trust words. Okay. So but people are just trusting. Uh, are just putting direct trust on each other. I mean, if you now uh, know, know this, th these people here, 
And I also know these people here, and we all uh, trusted them individually, but we, are, we never trusted us. Then the idea would be, okay, there are enough people here which we both trust, show it somehow. Let, if it's now green or not, it's another question. But Let, let's, uh, let's assume I'm an employee yeah. of maybe five secret agencies. Yeah, no, of course. And yeah. I say, I'm <laughs> person so, I'm person so, I'm yeah, person no. so. Of course, but this, this costs something if you want to do that on a really big scale still. I mean, that's, right. I, 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 that's absolutely clear that if, if you require uh, two less people, you can do that. But uh, that's, 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 uh, there you have costs involved because you need to create these puppets. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, this is a cost optimization project anyhow, because if you really manage to have more encryption, then in the, um, for X key score, some lights will get darker, and that's uh, right ahead the idea we have here, yeah. Okay, that's cool. So, we have like one minute left, so if it's a really quick question, we can still... Uh, what about uh, encryption of uh, group messages? Yeah, well, I mean, for email, um, if, you ha if you just have different contacts, um, um, I mean, do you mean something specific or let's say the email case now or what? Please, yeah, I, I mean, if for you talk, talk into the microphone. So. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, is that an implementation for uh, the mailman or something Not like yet. that? Not oh, yet, but that's, that's envisioned that you can uh, create a private key which you then can share uh, uh, between the people who, who should be able to enter the list. And if the key changes, you can signal that, and then a new key can be defined. So that's, that's envisioned, yes. Oh, now we really have to end. But thank you very much for this talk, and also you and your team for putting all this energy in this really hard field. So give him a big round of applause, please. <laughs>